And here's the chart showing the mean vector wind flow from 0 to 80,000 feet for the next six hours. As you can see, there's an easterly flow over the north of the British Isles, and the southeasterly flow over the rest of the country. To the east, over the low countries, there's a... 1440 hours on the 24th of January, 19... Well, the year doesn't really matter. This man, in the warning and monitoring organization, is a chief sector warning officer. He is in charge of this sector operations center, and normally is the only full-time member of its staff. Beside him is his leading scientist, who is an air pollution expert in civil life. An appropriate occupation, as he will be responsible, in the event of a nuclear attack, for advising the chief sector warning officer where, when, and how much radioactive fallout can be expected. This is the carrier receiver set, which, if it's regular king, should ever change to a banshee-like whale, could confirm that their knowledge will be required. These people normally work in the local post office, and as they knew all about telephones anyway, they, like the scientist, volunteered for this work. They trained at a special school in London, along with everyone else here, and they're all civil servants. They're not worried, because none of these people know that in a matter of minutes, they will be earnestly, frantically busy. They don't know yet that Midas satellites circling the Earth have just reported large-scale rocket firing deep from enemy territory. They don't know that two giant radar stations, part of the ballistic missile early warning system, are tracking those rockets towards the North American continent and that other missiles have been picked up which are aimed at this country. Master radar stations around the coast, following reports from continental radar stations, have picked up a wave of high-flying supersonic bombers heading for targets all over Western Europe. At the Air Defence Operations Centre, ADOC, the warning officer has assessed the situation and has issued an air attack warning to all parts of the country. The red warning. This air attack message has been passed to the BBC for nationwide broadcast. Your message received and understood. At the same time, an automatic system known as carrier control is relaying the message to 15,000 warning points throughout the country. Now it is only a matter of seconds before the nation knows it's fighting for survival. There is an emergency announcement. Now they know. The whole nation now knows of the impending attack. every effort has been made to destroy the enemy attack, inevitably some sections of it will get through to unleash their deadly weapons. The warning and monitoring organization must now get ready to plot the ground zeros to predict the path of resultant radioactive fallout so that special fallout warnings can be given to the civil population. For this purpose, the organization has divided the country into six sectors, Caledonian, Northern, Western, Eastern, Southern, and Metropolitan, 
each with its own sector operations centre. These centres receive their information from the Royal Observer Corps. The Royal Observer Corps has a number of specially constructed group headquarters in each sector, which are in turn fed with first-hand information on nuclear burst and fallout, gathered by their own individual posts, spread all over the country in clusters of three or four. Here, in the Metropolitan Sector's Operations Centre, 120 feet underground, the staff can only wait and check their communications. As nuclear destruction is poised above the waiting towns and surrounding countryside, the heartbeat of this vast organisation quickens. At the Royal Observer Corps Group Headquarters at Colchester, Watford, Horsham and Maidstone, they too can do nothing more than await confirmation that the nuclear attack has begun. Such confirmation is going to come first from Royal Observer Corps post Papa 1. A boat builder and a bank clerk are the two members of this team of four observers at Papa 1 who are on duty. Just one of 1,500 or more similar teams on whose reports the whole organization depends. Papa 1. 1450, pressure 2.5. Right, get the cassettes. 60 seconds after the last significant explosion has taken place, one member of the team is sent out to change the cassettes in the ground zero indicator. This instrument, by means of a pinhole camera technique, records the flash from the nuclear burst onto one of four photographic papers in cassettes slotted into holders. of 01. Spot size 12. Quite a big one. I'm touching the horizon line. All right, you better get out there, group. Nuclear burst, Papa 1. Papa 1. 1450. Bearing 104. Elevation 01. Touching spot size 12. Thank you. At Royal Observer Corps Group Headquarters, the bomb burst information from each post is coordinated by the triangulation team. Papa one. Short. Zero one. Touching. One two. The triangulator uses the many compass bearings received from within the group to plot the ground zeros of each burst. After a quick calculation, the elevation and spot size reveal the height and power of the weapon. The supervisor then establishes the GeoRef and National Grid reference of the Ground Zero before passing the bomb burst message to the duty controller. The duty controller sends the complete bomb burst information through to all neighboring groups and to sector so that fallout warnings can be initiated. However, each Royal Observer Corps group headquarters also has its own volunteer warning officers from the organization who are recruited locally. Should communications fail, or should sector be put out of action during the attack, these men would continue to issue fallout warnings independently to the civilian population in their own warning districts and to civil defense. They are in contact with other groups and through groups with other sectors. They have their own equipment, charts, displays, and of course, all bomb burst and fallout information at their fingertips.
but this time, the main battle will be at Sector, where details from other groups and sectors are already arriving. Nuclear burst. There's our first one. Yeah. Let's take a look at display A, see what the wind's likely to do with the fallout, shall we? Right. All right, go ahead. Well, you remember from the Met briefing this morning that there was a coral at the southern end of the North Sea area, about here. Now, that means that fallout from the smaller bombs will go in this direction. But the fallout from the bigger bombs, like this two megaton chap, mm. go up here. Well, if there's anything in any of the other sectors, it's not likely to affect us. No, no. Our main threat territory appears to be continental. Yes, down uh, here. France. We'd better take a look at the continental display. Right. Well, I've got one for you. It looks as though it will come your way. Where? It's on Boulogne. Only a little one. About a hundred kiloton. It will arrive on your coast in about an hour. Probably about here. Dungeness. Right, we'll put that on the displays. Thanks very much. Not at all. Thank you. No, you should be clear from that. So now, on a cold perspex screen, they have plotted the ground zeros, the centers of devastation on the world outside. The scientists predict the general direction of the fallout plumes, and the warning officers, with the warning districts marked on their display, decide which districts shall be issued with black warnings, fallout imminent, and which with gray, fallout expected, but not within the hour. Fallout warning message, Maidstone, black, 51, 52, 53, 55, 56, message ends. 55, 56, message ends, thank you. Fallout warning, Canterbury 1, Canterbury 2, Canterbury 3, black. Fallout warning, Canterbury 1, Canterbury 2, Canterbury 3, black. But it's not only the public that need to know where fallout is expected. The organization has many other customers. Besides the liaison officers from the continent, in this case, France and Belgium, Sector is in contact with RAF Fighter Command at ADOC and its master radar stations, with Bomber Command and the Royal Navy through ADOC, and with the Army and Civil Defense at regional headquarters, supplying them all with essential bomb burst and fallout information. Nuclear burst original. Name 01 Alpha. Maidstone? The Royal Observer Corps also has a liaison officer Confirm. keeping an eye on problems connected with the source of this information. Confirm this air burst for us. This one. It's a big one. We want confirmation of its power and height. Right, I'll get on to Watford and get you the answer right away. Oh, you've had the fallout warning. Shall be due any time now. Here it is. Papa one, fallout, 1528. Thank you. Thank you. As first reports of fallout arrive at sector, and are plotted on the scientist display A, the predictions made earlier by the scientists are revised and the actual fallout limit lines are drawn in. From now on, every five minutes, fallout readings will be called in from every Royal Observer Corps post in the group. Papa 1. Papa 1. 1.2. 1.2. Attack! Down! Water! I'm going to have to see what's happening. Well, the whole 
place is absolutely swamped out there. Looks though we've been hit by a tidal wave. There must have been a sea burst somewhere close. Well, I'd better inform Centre. Papa One. Papa One. Papa One. Hello, Centre. Hello, Centre. Well, it's no good, I'm afraid. The phone's dead. Oh, blast. That means one of us will have to go up and see if the line's down. Now we'll have to wait for the water to go down a bit. Anyway, it shouldn't be too risky. Fallout hasn't built up too much yet. Here, yeah, what's happened to Zero One Alpha? It's moving very slowly. It's a fairly big one. It should be spreading across here, Charlie. According to the Met report, it could be one of two things. Oh, hello, what's this? Oh, it's that bomb over Boulogne. It should have come in across Dungeness. <laughs> it's on time. Well, what about Zero One Alpha? According to the Met boys, it's in a southerly airstream heading out over the sea. Either that or it's so high that it's only producing a sprinkling of fallout. Of course, that will delay our first reports. Oh, I see. Well, how heavy is the fallout around here? Come on, let's look at the wallboards. Well, as you can see, these readings are quite low, which could indicate that possibly we don't have a true ground burst. One wallboard for each group. One logarithmic chart for each cluster of posts. As five-minute readings from each post are passed through from group and marked up, the graph of fallout intensity grows. Before the next shift of plotters comes to take over, the charts will be covered with tiny figures, accurate and detailed monitoring of dose rates throughout the sector. Everything OK? Yes, I think so. Apparently a carrier control point's out of action, though, and several districts in the path of the French fallout didn't get the black warning. Well, in the middle of that sector now, though. Yes. Anyway, the men on the warning points will have pushed out warnings as soon as they got a significant reading on their instruments, so it'll all be taken care of. Out. I've got one of the master radar stations on the line. They want to use one of their airfields in Essex, but they're not too sure where zero 01 Alpha will be going. I don't think we are either. It's behaving very strangely. Tell them it'll certainly be safe for them to use it for an hour at least, and that we'll call them when we've got some more readings and can give them a more accurate picture. On zero one alpha yet? No, I'm afraid not at the moment. See if this coral moves northwards. This plume could drift across and hit the continent without any warning from us at all. What we really need is an aeroplane to go out and scout around. Yes, or a ship. That's it. The navy. Mm. Get on to the navy at ADOC. Right. They're bound to have a ship around there. Is it reading anything yet? Not a thing, mate. The only fall I've got here is from Ray Seagull. Nothing. That means it must be going up this way as we thought. But as it was nearly an airburst, I don't think the dose rate will be heavy. Good. Oh, look, it couldn't be better. We're getting maximum readings here already. Oh. I wonder what happened to Papa One. Sixteen fifty-five, four. Right, all set? Right. Now, it shouldn't take you more than half an hour to find and fix the break, even if it's right down by the road. Let's see now. Reading outside is just over four runcheons per hour, so you should only clock up a dose of about two runcheons. But whatever you do, don't hang around. Oh, and keep checking your decimeter. The fallout situation might change any minute. Right.
So for the moment, the dose rate graph for PAPA-1 seems to have come to an end. But for the others, the readings are already beginning to fall off and the predicted decay curves of radioactivity can be drawn in and DR7's plotted. DR7 being the dose rate seven hours after the burst. By this method, it is possible from DR7's to calculate ahead the dose rate for all future times at any locality affected by fallout. In some cases, however, these DR7's may be wrong, either because the total amount of fallout deposited is not accurately known or because the decay of fallout is not following the law assumed. To cope with this, special deposition measurement checks are made at some Royal Observer Corps posts. These are reported to sector where they are analyzed and used to revise and produce more accurate DR7s. The loose ends are tidied up. Contours show the areas of high and low dose rates. The final picture is nearly complete. Now, what about this sea burst? No, that's all we've got on the board at the moment. Well, look, I, uh, I wonder if you'd get on to Easton and see what they can tell us about it. Mm, I've just tried, but all the lines are down. They're going to have a go on the radio. Hello, Eastern Sector, can you hear me? Call the Eastern Sector. Hello? Hello, Eastern Sector. I'm sorry, I can't get through. Right. Would you take over? You've had more experience. Certainly. Eastern, this is Metropolitan. Query for you. Over. Eastern, this is Metropolitan. Query for you. Over. Eastern, this is Metropolitan. Query for you. Over. Metropolitan, this is Eastern. Strength three. Go ahead. Over. Eastern, this is Metropolitan. Message begins. Can you supply DR7s for all posts concerned with 04 Alpha? Over. Metropolitan. Roger. Out. What's it like on the south coast, sir? Well, not too bad at all. Only one burst. Southampton was the only place that got hit. Southampton? That's where her parents live. Metropolitan. This is Eastern. Urgent message for you. Over. Eastern, go ahead, over. Metropolitan, message reads, 04 Alpha has turned eastwards towards the Dutch and Belgian coast. ETA 2200. We have informed Holland. No doubt you will inform Belgium. Message in, over. Eastern, budget out. Thanks. Please. This has just come in. It's urgent. Thanks. I'll mark it for you on the map. I see. Hello, we are back. We are back. The sector metropolitan vient d'apprendre du sector est que 04 Alpha, repeat, 04 Alpha, se tourne à l'est vers la côte belge. Heure approximative d'arrivée, 22 heures. Répète, 22 heures. C'est pas joli, hein? Right, now. I'm sorry I've been so long. There were four breaks, one right down by the road. I think I'll fix them all, okay? Well, what's the position now? Are there any further districts we could issue weights to and release? Well, there's this pocket here, Maidstone 6-4, which doesn't appear to have been affected by any of the plumes so far. We've left it for the time being because we're not too certain on the edge of this plume here. Good. Well, it doesn't look as though anything's coming their way, but, um... Let's recheck the situation in half an hour's time, right. eh? Sure, are, yes. Sir. Anything more we can learn from this? No, I don't think so, really. We've got almost a complete picture of the situation on the board now. Oh. Of course, there's the odd, uh, First arrival, like this chap here. Oh, well, look, they've regained contact with the post. Which one is it? Oh, it's Papa One. Oh, Papa One. Well, now that's something. <laughs> you know, we really seem to be getting on top of the situation. I think we can relax for a little bit. I certainly hope so. May I have a chocolate? No, thanks, all right. I think I'll grab the rest of them and have a puff at this. All right.
Take this with me. All right, let's get everything tidied up here, huh? And get everybody down from the canteen. It's going to be pretty busy again here in a short while. So the battle is not yet over. Round two has already begun, and this second attack may even be followed by others. The United Kingdom Warning and Monitoring Organization, with all its highly trained resources, is spread like chain mail over the entire country. Break one link, break many links. The overall organization can still be kept operative. The service of this organization is provided not only to warn and so protect the civilian population of this country, but also in its military role to provide a fund of information to maintain the active defense of the Western Alliance. And finally, to help support the deterrent, which any would-be attacker knows is inevitable.